O Lord, may the words that I speak and the thoughts that our hearts think be acceptable in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In his book, Luther, Biography of a Reformer, Frederick Knoll relates this incident from Luther's early life. Fifteen-year-old Luther left Magdeburg at the end of one year. For some unknown reason, his father, Hans Luther, had his son transfer to a school in Eisenach. Eisenach was a walled city in Thuringia, located southwest of Mansfeld, the home of Luther's parents. A castle known as the Wartburg looked down on the town of more than 2,000 people. Once much used, the Wartburg was falling into ruin. Despite its condition, however, it would later become a place of refuge for Martin Luther. That time came 23 years later. Following the Diet of Worms in 1521, Luther was declared an outlaw by Charles V, Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. This meant that anyone who wanted to hunt Luther down and kill him was free to do so. At this point, when his life was in great danger, Luther's prince, Frederick the Wise, arranged for Luther to be supposedly kidnapped and spirited away to the Wartburg. There Luther lived and worked for ten months, disguised as a knight and safe from his enemies. Eight years later, Luther penned a hymn, his most famous hymn, in praise of the God who can be depended upon to guard and keep his people in every trial. What could, he, what could be more natural than for Luther to compare his great God to a mighty fortress, ein feste Burg? Although Luther based his hymn primarily on Psalm 46, it also echoes the words of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. The Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. In today's sermon, we want to see what God has to say to us in these words of his. Words that bring both comfort and also encouragement. The Lord is a strong fortress. The Wartburg is such a fortress. Visiting it was one of the highlights of the trip that Ruth and I took to Germany and Austria seven years ago. Such a fortress, even if it is a bit run down as it was in Luther's day, provides a number of advantages for a person who seeks shelter behind its walls. Behind the walls of a fortress, there is protection from our enemies. From the towers of a fortress, you have a clear view of the surrounding countryside. This is especially true if the, wart, if the fortress is built on a high hill, as the Wartburg is. The fortress also serves, serves as the basis of operations from which an army can advance into enemy territory. Finally, the fortress provides a secure place to which you can return to recover from your battles against the adversary. To provide such advantages, of course, the fortress might must be strong. It must be a mighty fortress if it is going to be able to stand against the attacks of the enemy. The Lord God is such a mighty fortress, says Luther in the hymn with which we began this service. So too does the Word of God, our text from Proverbs 18, and also the closing words of Psalm 46. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The Lord certainly provides us with protection against our enemies. Luther experienced this protection in his own life. Other earlier reformers like John Huss and Savonarola, who had lived before Luther, had been condemned and put to death by the church. 
Luther's life was spared because God provided him with a prince who had both the will and the ability to protect him. God also protects us every day of our lives. He sends his holy angels to watch over us. Often I think that you and I don't even realize how many times and in how many ways God is protecting us. After the events of 9-11, there were many stories that came out about people who worked at the World Trade Center whose lives were spared because they missed their bus or they were sick or for some other reason were either late in getting to work or didn't get there at all. Yes, there were many who died that day as well. Wasn't God watching over them? Yes, he was. But for whatever reason, God had decided that that day was the day when their life here on earth would end, something that eventually happens to all of us. Luther's greatest enemies, however, were not physical, the pope or the emperor. Luther's greatest enemies were spiritual, the unholy trinity of sin, eternal death, and the devil. The old evil foe, Luther calls him in the hymn, A Mighty Fortress. It was fear of eternal damnation that drove Luther to the monastery in the first place. But he found no refuge there, not within the walls of the cloister, nor in all of his struggles to be righteous before God. Luther found deliverance from his eternal enemies only when he found Christ only when he learned from the gospel that we are saved by God's grace alone, through faith alone in Jesus Christ. Today's epistle sums that up very well. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. God has rescued us and continues to do so through Jesus our Savior by dying on the cross for our sin in our place and by rising again from the dead Jesus has earned for us what we could never earn for ourselves he has won full and free pardon for all of our sins and complete and total deliverance from all the punishment that we because of our sins deserve as Luther puts it in his own explanation to the second article of the Apostles' Creed, Jesus has redeemed me, a lost and condemned sinner, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and the power of the devil, not with silver or gold, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom." The Lord God as a mighty fortress also provides us with a vantage point from which we can view the rest of our world. You certainly get a beautiful view of the surrounding countryside from the Wartburg after you have climbed 275 steps to get up there. But today I'm not talking about a physical vantage point. I'm talking about a spiritual one, a philosophical one. There are so many philosophies present in our world today, belief systems by which people order their lives. They range anywhere from hedonism, you only go round once in life, so grab for all the gusto you can, to more noble philosophies that urge us to devote our lives to serving others. In God and in his word, we have a standard by which we can evaluate all other philosophies by which we can judge which are good and which are not. In God and his word, we have a perspective that helps us to understand what is going on in our world, both the good and the bad. In God and his word, we find the truth of which Jesus speaks in today's holy gospel, the truth that will set us free. As a mighty fortress, God also provides for us a place where we can be equipped to face the challenges of life and also to do battle against the enemies of God that want to destroy us. A good example of how God equips us for battle can be found in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 to 17, where the Apostle Paul says, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness, 
Christ's righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith which with, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And finally, God, who is our refuge and strength, also provides us with a safe haven to which we can return when the battles we have been fighting grow too much for us. When the enemy seems to be getting the upper hand, when we need a place to lick our wounds, so to speak, when we have fallen flat on our face, when we need someone to pick us up again, then in Jesus we can find all of that and more. In Jesus we find the assurance that our sins, our shortcomings are forgiven. In Jesus we find strength and encouragement so that we can continue to fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus we have the promise that the final victory is ours. Victory over sin, victory over death, victory over the evil one himself. As Luther reminds us in his hymn, this world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will. He can harm us none. He's judged. The deed is done. One little word can fell him. Yes, the Lord is a strong fortress. But our text also points out that if we are to be safe, we must run to him. Just as there are many philosophies in our world today to which people cling, so too there are many different fortresses in which people put their trust. Many trust in their own abilities to do good, to please God, or to win out over the enemy. For a lot of people, their fortress is their money. They trust in their wealth to see them through any bad situation. And then there are those who trust in their religion, the religious things they do, like going to church or trying to keep the Ten Commandments. This is what Martin Luther tried to do until he discovered the truth that man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. The problem with the fortresses that we erect is that they are vulnerable to attack and conquest. Luther found that out from his own experience. He couldn't please God on his own. He couldn't earn God's favor by his own works. That's why he wrote in today's opening hymn, the old evil foe now means deadly woe. Deep guile and great might are his dread arms in fight. On earth is not his equal. Those of you who lived through World War II or who have done any studying about it may remember reading, hearing or reading about the Maginot Line. It was a line of fortresses and other defenses that the French built before the war that was designed to keep the Germans out of France. Supposedly, it was indestructible. The French were confident that there was no way the Germans would ever get through it. But when war broke out, the Germans simply went around it, and France fell to the German blitzkrieg in a matter of days. With might of ours cannot be done. Soon were our loss effected, wrote Martin Luther. But for us fights the valiant one whom God himself elected. Ask ye, who is this? Jesus Christ it is, of Sabaoth, Lord. He's the Lord of hosts, and there's none other God. He holds the field forever. The Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. Martin Luther believed that. So he found his mighty fortress in Jesus and in Jesus alone. This faith sustained him throughout the tumultuous years of the Reformation. It gave him the courage to stand up to the Pope and to the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, the two most powerful men of his day. In January 1546, accompanied by his sons Paul and Hans, as well as several friends, Martin Luther traveled from Wittenberg to Eisleben, the town where he had been born 62 years earlier. He went to, to settle a dispute between two brothers, but he also took the opportunity to preach several times in St. Andrew's Church, the church he had attended as a child. 
Incidentally, another highlight of our trip to visit the Luther sites was being able to stand in that same pulpit where Luther stood. On February 17th, of 1546, the two brothers finally agreed to be reconciled to one another. Luther's mission had been a success, but the mission, together with all the preaching and teaching Luther did, had taken a heavy toll on his already weakened heart. Early on the morning of February 17th, Luther had a series of heart attacks. Doctors were called, but they quickly gave up all hope. Sensing that the end was near, Luther's friend, Justice Jonas, approached the couch where Luther was lying and asked in a loud voice, Reverend Father, are you willing to die in the name of Christ and the doctrine you have preached? Yes, came the answer, loud enough for all to hear. And with that final confession, Luther fell asleep, safe in the arms of his mighty fortress. A mighty fortress is our God. That's more than just a hymn. It's God's truth for each one of us. Like Luther, run to him and be safe. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We will receive the offering at this time.